Hi, welcome back to Cooking with Grandpa. Today we're gonna to make Italian bread. I had a couple of requests, a lot of requests for our recipe and video on Italian bread because I had listed it in my Italian uh, tuna fish salad and everybody wants to know how to make the Italian bread. Uh, we're gonna get started right now. Okay, let's get started. I want to tell you about the ingredients. Everything will be listed under the video in the description. You'll have all the ingredients and measurements for two loaves. I'm going to make seven, uh, four loaves because I have a seven quart mixer and I'm not going to use my five quart mixer over here. You'll probably have a five quart mixer so you'll use the recipe that I'm listing in the description. We have our flour here, and I checked the temperature of it because I want the water to be close to 64 degrees. That's what you're gonna have to use. Now I'm gonna put my water in. And here's our instant yeast. I'm gonna dump this in. And I already uh, fixed up my bucket. I oiled it up a little bit put this yeast right on top. Okay. And then we'll get over here to the mixer. Now you only mix this dough for about four minutes. There's nothing in this except flour right now and the yeast and the water. This is called the sponge dough method. And we're gonna mix this four minutes, five minutes, and then we're gonna take it out and it's gonna have to ferment for about four hours. Okay, we're only about two minutes into the mix. You want to go about five minutes, give that yeast a chance to get circulated in there. And you'll see it come out and be clean and everything. And I'll get back to you in about a few minutes and you see how this is going. You can see how it looks right now. It's kind of rough and shaggy. Okay. Okay, we're kind of done here. It's about four, and a half, about four or five minutes I've mixed it. I'm gonna take it out. I wanna check my temperature on this dough. I want it to be come up to around 77 degrees. This is the sponge. And we'll check that over here. Go our board. Give it a couple of turns by hand. Get it together. Take a measurement of this. Beautiful, right on the money, 77. That's what we want. That's why I started off with 64 degree water. They bring the flour that temperature down to and you gotta figure in your mix time. How the mixer heats it up a little too. Okay, now you got it, you get it together. And you kind of get it nice. I had oiled this up already. So I'm gonna push this in here. Push it down. And we gotta keep this in here for four hours. And I usually throw it in the oven I have it, the oven set up where I put my light on and I block the vent. And I got that oven up to a temperature of about, let me see what we got here. 83 degrees, which is good. And I'm gonna cover this up with a towel so it doesn't hit the light, doesn't bother it. And we're gonna put it in the oven. I use whatever you feel you can use I got it around 83 degrees, and we're gonna time, time this for four hours. In four hours, it should break. Okay, all right, that's it. We'll see you in four hours. Okay, I wanted to show you guys how it looks after about two hours of fermentation. You can see we're up to two quarts. We started with one quart, it's almost doubled. 
but it's gonna take about four to four and a half hours to ferment properly. And that's where you get all your flavor and everything for the bread. So I just wanted to give you that heads up. Okay, we're back. It's four and a half hours of this thing fermented. And I'm gonna show you to you how it looks when it's four and a half hours. You can see it's almost three quarts. It started with one, three times itself. You see it starts to recede that they call breaking. That's done. Now we have our flour and sugar and malt here mixed together. And if you don't have the malt, all you gotta do is replace that with a little bit of sugar, the same amount of sugar as you would have put malt. And this is our salt. We're gonna put in our salt when we start mixing about four minutes after the mix starts because you wanna put your delayed salt because that helps the mix get developed. Your dough gets developed quicker and better. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna take our, uh, oh, yep, hold on. And I forgot to tell you about, when I put this in for fermenting, I put the amount of water I needed for my dough entry in a refrigerator. You gotta have it cold because we're gonna have it this mix for I mean, eight, eight minutes and we want this to come out of the mix at about 80 degrees. So we're gonna put that in first. So that's been in the fridge, so you got talking about 32 degree water. We're gonna put our flour in, and then we're gonna take our our sponge. Just gonna put it, I don't like to put it right into the water because it's very cold and this sponge is at about 80 degrees now. We'll put that in like that. Remember, I'm making double. Your, your recipe on the, on the inside will be for half of this. Okay, we don't need this. We don't need this anymore. So we're going to start mixing. Okay. Start this mix on speed one, so we don't throw the flour all around. We do this for about two minutes. I'm just knocking some of these off the side. Okay, it's almost two minutes using that speed one. I'm going to increase this to. A Okay, we're about four minutes into the mix now, and I'm going to start adding my salt kind of slowly. This helps the dough develop much quicker. Okay, now we're going to go to full development. Okay, we're kind of there now. We did about eight and a half minutes, nine minutes. Take this down. Get this over to the wrench. Don't be throwing a lot of flour around. You shouldn't have to. As you can see, it's a beautiful dough. Throw flour down, start altering the formula. Now, 
Now the next step, you gotta leave it down like this for about 20 minutes. It's called floor time. I'm gonna cover this with a piece of plastic and we're gonna leave it go for 20 minutes. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Okay, as you can see, I covered this up with a towel and I also covered it with a piece of plastic. I got these, this is from Ziploc bag. I cut them open and I oiled one side so it doesn't stick. They're good when you cover your doors up. Okay, so we got this, I think 15 minute floor time and we're gonna just try to cut this into four. I'm cutting it into four, you would be cutting it into two. Okay, we're gonna try and get these to about 13 and a half ounces each. So, see how close we are. That's 14, a little heavy. Yeah, this one looks a little light. Yeah, it's 12. So we'll take a little off. This one looks a little heavy too. 13. four loaves. Now what we're going to start doing is pre-shaping. I want to cover these up right now while we're doing that. If you have a damp towel it's even better. I don't have that right now. This here on the side. Make a roll out of that. Okay, this is our pre-shake. Try to get it into a rectangle. Flatten it out as much as you can. Get some of the gas out of it. As you can see, I'm not trying flour all around this because I don't want to screw it up in any way. We got almost a rectangle here, flat, kind of flat. And fold it over like this inside. And you fold it in like this. Now you got this. same side up and you come down and leave it go and we're going to give it 10 minutes in between all this and we're going to do our next one okay we're doing our second piece now I'll show you I'll show you again what I do 
This is to even it up a little bit. Cut it in a little. And you roll it third down. Kind of seal that up. Okay, now this is our second one. And right now we've got four to do, two more to do. So I'm gonna put this over here, cover this one up. And I'm gonna put my timer on for 10 minutes because I want them to rest for about 10 minutes. Okay, I'll get back to you when we do the other two. Okay, here we go. 10 minutes is up. We take our first loaf and we put it on the table again and now we start shaping it into the shape we want. Flatten it out again. Now this time we're gonna go a little different. We're gonna go like this into the center. Now we had a 10 minute rest after the second one. So they all got like about 10 minutes to relax. And now you take this and you go like this. Hold it over. And kind of squeeze that, make sure that gets closed up. That seam right there at the bottom. Sit down on the ground here. Make sure it's all closed. And then you start going like this a little bit to get it to the length you want. Okay, how's that look? Well, it's all good. And we put this back here. And we cover this. And we do the second one. Now, after I do the second one, I'm going to give it eight minutes rest and then just stretch it out a little bit longer. Okay, we got it flattened out a little bit. I'm going to fold it over into the center. You get better as you go through this every time. Seal that seal right there. Yeah. Flatten it out. And then you take it and go over again. And just to make sure you close this seam. Seems beautiful though. Okay, and then you start rolling. Seam up, cover it up, and I'm going to give it eight minutes rest now while I do the other two, and then we'll go back one more time. Okay, we waited about eight minutes, rested them for eight minutes. We're just going to give them a, a final roll, get them close to the shape we want. Keep the seam down. Now you take it. Now on the sheet pans, I put parchment paper and I, I sprinkled corn flour on it. I put them on there like that. Second one for you. Keep the C 
machine down. Find it out a little bit. Put it on there. Sheet pan is upside down. I got my proof box working in the, in the oven. I took my plastic wrap that I oiled on one side, put it over like that. Take one of these towels, place it like this. Now, just with the light going, I got this up to about 89 degrees. This is great. So now we're going to put in one tray here. You all only have one tray. So put that in. Okay. Now I'm going to do my second two loaves. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to proof this for 45 minutes in the oven. And we'll be back to you. Okay, we're done proofing for 45 minutes. I'm going to put this on the table for a minute. second one you only have one remember one thing when you do this use a bread flour don't use an all-purpose flour you need a strong flour bake 430 degrees start we're going to time this for 25 minutes while it's proofing on the table because we want to get this oven a real hot and in the mint room, this is what we do now. I found when I used to spray them before they went in the oven to put the seeds on, they would have too much oven spring. So now I kind of spray them right off the bat now. Over here, we have our spray so they dry out a little. I didn't want too much oven spray. Okay, we're doing our second batch here. Spraying them with warm water, you know, 80 degree water. You know, I never want to shock them though. It's been in the oven there for about 80 something degrees. And there's my sesame seeds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just lay this over them lightly. And in 25 minutes, we're gonna put them in the oven and we're gonna bake them. Don't forget bread flour. Not all quite flour. Okay, I told you about the bread, use bread flour. And also, I'm not using steam in the oven because I spray these with water and put seeds on them. If you're not gonna use the seeds and you're not gonna spray them, then you, maybe you should put a, about five ice cubes on the bottom of your your oven and, and uh, steam them up so you get some oven spray. I'm gonna score these now. Okay, and this is gonna go into our oven at 430 degrees for 20 minutes. On the bottom shelf, a little more top, uh, bottom heat. There we go. Get your timer, zero, two, oh, start. Okay, get back to you in a minute. Okay. We got it out of the oven. They're all done. I have um, two more on the other side. You're going to have two. Now, here's what you can do with this. You got our 
tuna, Italian tuna salad and our chickpea salad. We're gonna have a nice dinner. And I'll be back with you in a minute and have my grandson cut open one of these. They're a little hot right now. Okay, here we go. My grandson's gonna cut this first loaf. Lorenzo. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. Nice, beautiful bread. Now, hold on there, buddy. I'll cut it like that. So, there it is. Fresh Italian bread. Beautiful. Okay. We're all done. Here it is. Beautiful loaf of bread for you. Homemade. Better than any store-bought bread you can have. And then you use it with those salads and you got a delicious and nutritious meal. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and this is our requested video. Bye now.